because no one gives a shit about fucking a crappy Springleaf drum. Apart from John, who wants to stick it in Affinity, because he sticks yeah. any card he can in Affinity. Yeah. Because he's a, he's a dirty Affinity pervert. Hello people of the internet, it's me, Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi, and with me today I've got some um, lovely fellows to join me and talk about magic cards and trading cards and shit. I've got Dave. Hello. Just Dave. Uh, jo- John. Hello. <laughs> These are really very exciting names, and Tanner, the, the voice of reason as I called him. Good evening. <laughs> or good night, whatever. The, yeah, incredibly enthusiastic there as well compared to Dave and John who are just like, hello, hi, hello. We're going to talk about some spoilers because there's been a fucking huge leak. Basically, somebody has managed to leak a shitload of spoilers, including the rest of the expeditions, um, the majority, if not all, of the mythics from the new set, and some rares as well. So this is kind of exciting stuff. It's kind of also a little bit of a shame because our spoiler season has now almost come to an end because all we've got to look forward to now is maybe an Inquisition of Kozilek reprint and lots of commons and uncommons for limited. So, question is, do we think someone's getting fired? What, what do people think about I don't see how someone can't be getting fired with it. Did, what happened with the Godberg back on New Frexia? We're all aware of that, yeah? Yeah. Um, oh, Dave's like, what? Slightly what? What? different. They sent the Godbook to a French magazine who then gave it to one of their writers who was a pro, who then went off and used it to test. Right, okay, so that's that's how that got out there. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that was more of a... Flip- but I guess this is as well, right? Someone's been given a foil sheet during testing somewhere and they just took it home and cut it I off. I wouldn't say given, but... Not given. You know, um, okay, part of their job was to hold on to it. Acquired a foil sheet. Yeah. Or they just saw one laying around. It might not be part of their job. They might have just seen, hey, somebody dropped this on the floor. First of all, we got that wastes are confirmed. and that, Well, we knew this already, didn't we? We had a, a Mothership article, didn't we, about wastes and colourless manner that no one seemed to understand? It was leaked, or, well, announced on the... Um, Magic World Cup stream. So let, 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 let's skip on from that because that's a, a boring conversation that everyone's already like aware of. Let's talk about the walkers. So we've got a Chandra and we've got a elfy lady. What's her name again? Nissa. Nissa. <laughs> I don't know. I don't play elves. They're, they're boring. So are we excited about these? Does anyone actually like want to play these in any format anywhere ever? Initially, I, I think Nissa was pretty good and then I realised her ultimate was minus seven. I suppose to minus six which means... No more so doubling you only, get, you only get excited about planeswalkers when they're about their ultimates, then? Well, no, well, in EDH, and you can. <laughs> you, can do dumb, you can do dumb things with planeswalkers and doubling season, so. Yeah, because you tick her up and you get two zero one plants. <laughs> Doesn't seem that great. John, John, tell us why you're so excited for Nissa Voice of Zendikar. Well, oh, I'm not anymore. Because oh. of the uh, <laughs> lack right. of doubling season shenanigans, so do we think this is is a three mana planeswalker? So it's got to be at least mildly playable in standard. Yeah, yeah. I've seen how effective a, you know pumping out zero one plants is going to be. Well, I mean, I'm thinking a second ability is actually better than the first because she's borderline like Gideon's emblem. Apart from Gideon's emblem, obviously affects all creatures you play afterwards. This is an emblem that affects all creatures that you're playing currently right at that point in time, but doesn't kill her, which is actually quite well, relevant. I mean, you could look at her from a purely utilitarian point of view, which is that she is a three mana um, Gammy Township. Yeah. I which mean, sticks that's, around uh, and pumps yeah, all the Yeah, could potentially do more. But, you know, and as we discussed earlier before the call started, I love me a Gammy Township. Mm. Like, play that card all day long. Card's fucking She's great. There's also a spell slot rather than a land slot in your deck. and. Okay, yeah, well, this is very relevant. That's why Gabby's Township is so good, because you aren't wasting a slot on an anthem effect. You are just getting to like pump your dudes up off the land, which is great. It's also bizarre that like, her ultimate has no interaction with her other abilities. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Like It's weird that she makes plants, puts counters and shit, and then draws cards. Like None of those your things. Lands. I think like... the problem would be that if you had it to be gain X life and draw X cards where X is the number of creatures you control, that venture is far too close to previous Garricks that we've had. So this is their way of differentiating her from Garrick that she cares well, no, about land. Didn't, didn't Garrick make like beasts com- like equal to the number of lands well, you like control four and Garricks, stuff? But one of them like, fails which one it is now. It was um, Call did. of Beasts, wasn't it? Didn't he have yeah, a, the monsters? Yeah. Yeah. Draw a card for each creature you control. So well, it was draw a card like, equal to the power because... of the greatest creature you control and that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. but he's, he's got all kinds of different kind of draw abilities. 
But the Land Matter yeah. thing Garrick's already done before as well, didn't he? Didn't he make worms or something? He made worms, six, six worms for each land you control. I like each of the abilities flavor wise because, like, plants, she's, you know, coming to Zendikar and trying to help regrow all the stuff that's been wasted and decay and destroyed by the Eldrazi. She's a planeswalker, so she's obviously a leader at the moment, so she's bringing people together by pumping them up. And then the rest of the stuff is just like, you know, drawing from what land is there is a very necessary thing. So I think I, I like I like all the abilities from a kind of flavory story, her fitting into where things are at the moment kind of point of view. I just find them all a bit underwhelming from a don't really want to play this card point of view. <laughs> Which is fair. Like It's good for them to make a flavor success, right? Even if it isn't a card you want to play like in, in standard or modern or whatever. But Gideon Ally of Zendikar is a great flavor of card. And it's a really good card in standard. So does, does, does Chandra hit any of those things? I mean, she's called the Flame Caller, and she makes two flamey elemental things, Dave. So, I mean, that's a flavour of success, right? Yeah. <laughs> she's got, she's got, she's got yeah. two fireballs in the art. Yeah, her hair's on fire. Yeah. She she's, makes ball lightnings. She's just no, 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 she makes spark, 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 spark elementals. Elemental, spark yeah. elemental, get it right, yeah. Fucking noob. She's just doing Chandra stuff, though. She's not doing anything, like... I'm like since the, when has Chandra the, the, managed to wheel a fortune? Is, you has she ever done that before? She's Plus providing one? red card advantage in some kind of way, but like the Nissa is doing feels like she's actually helping out Zendikar. She's growing stuff. She's boosting people up. She's drawing on the land. Whereas Chandra's just doing. I'm gonna make some fiery stuff. That's what I do. But how do I'm gonna we... throw some cards around. That's kind but, of what I vaguely do in red. Again, and that's I'm just what, gonna throw some so, more fire around. That's what Chandra does. She enhances. She calls on flame and fire to do damage. Yeah, it's just the fact that she does, she's not really fitting into the whole but, but maybe she is. problem thing But maybe she is. Maybe we don't know. Yeah, maybe she goes rogue. Maybe she gets angry. Don't forget she's the one that accidentally set these guys out on purpose before. So maybe she's now like, oh, whoopsie daisy, I have to go rogue. We don't know the storyline yet, do we? Is she playable at six mana? That remains to be seen. I'm going to draw the comparison here, like I said earlier, to, to Elspeth, because people are saying, oh, Elspeth's rubbish. She's six mana. You'll never get there. This is a card that gets you six mana. It draws you more cards if you need them. It like For six mana, it can just be a four damage wrath that kills everything. We obviously know it doesn't kill another mythic we're going to come to in just a moment, but that's that's relevant as well. Like, so control decks can play it as like a card advantage engine, or they can play it as a wrath effect, or they can just finish the game by like smashing them in the face with three on tramplers. Oh. Because the elementals don't survive though, they don't protect her. She's uh, for six mana planes while coming out at four loyalty. If she wants to clear things away, she has to get very small, and she doesn't necessarily clear every. Whereas you cleared mo a lot most stuff away with yeah yeah um yeah, the definitely. minus three on. Uh, Elspeth, that's well, the problem name. is, yeah, she 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 minus threes and survives to kill like stuff that doesn't matter. We're in a format where we've got Eldrazi and giant sphinxes and stuff, so she really doesn't kill anything that's actually relevant while surviving herself, right? So, yeah, well, I mean, I'm I'm completely voted out because I don't want to be committal after we got the Rabble Master thing so badly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got other mythics to talk about. We've got another mythic Eldrazi that apparently John's excited about because he plays a shitty Greenlands deck in EDH. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kozilek's Return. This is a big player, right? This is going to make Tron fucking stupid in modern, right? This card is this dumb. Is, this is more a modern card than it is. Well, standard will still like it, I guess. But, I mean, it's it's an expensive, the thing is, it's an expensive pyroclasm. Dave, weren't you standard. saying you thought this card would see play more in standard? I think I think also see playing standard like because there'll be an Eldrazi ramp there'll be there's red green rampy Eldrazi ramp decks and it'll see play in that of course it will it's um, it helps them clear away the little stuff at the in the same way as Tron wants to play something like that it helps them survive a little bit early on and then when people have played the, their mid game stuff they play their huge stuff and clear away their rhinos or whatever it's it's it it's a it'll i think it'll still one see thing, play in the ramp decks one thing is that it's it's an instant speed pyroclasm at its absolute worst For oh, it's minutes. instant I speed i didn't realize it was whoa instant dave yeah, you, miss, instant, you but... missed the good bit mate <laughs> that's the good bit like it's three mana though and it's also in a format where you've got siege rhinos and four four and offenders and things getting pumped by guinea emblems like i don't think it does nothing in the current standard but of course but the, it does kill those things with the second mode with the second mode, yeah. yeah so yeah. you've, so you've it, got a cast it, it kills of three mana spell. In, in, in a red green ramp deck, it kills like the, the mono red stuff that's smacking you early on. So, and, then, but, and, it kill, and also later on, it kills the... Or, or the, maybe the the smaller stuff they play early on. And then later on, it kills the... Um, you, you're it right kills in the, the it, it, it's, it's the right answer, but to the wrong problem. Like, mono red, go wide... Goblins isn't the issue in standard right now, is it? Like, it's like, yeah. it's like Abdan control and shit like that. Like, Things it... it, it 
currently conflicts with the other red sweeper, which is the Converge Radiant Flames. Yeah. For the same kind of mana cost, and also it does one. Well, it, it's less flexible, but yeah. it's in speed. I, so it's currently. It, it, I don't know if it's two different cards for two different purposes. I'm more scared of Tron in modern getting to play an instant speed Pyroclasm for one more mana that later on can blow up Goifs and Rhinos and. Ugh. Oh, yeah, it's it's, 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 it's ridiculous in Tron compared to Tower And it can't be countered. You can't remand that. That second ability is triggered. Tron, though, surely, if they're playing the Aldrazi, they've basically got to the point where they're winning anyway. No, because if they if they cast anything other than Emrakul, they haven't necessarily won at that point because you can still race them. At this point, it literally the Aldrazi comes down. And it... But the only other Aldrazi they play is New Ulamog, and that's going to exile those things anyway. Yeah, if you're exiling the two Goifs which are going to race you, then you're going to win. Yeah, I guess they can like, exile two lands double. and then burn away the Goifs. At <laughs> that, that, that point, I guess, yeah, run. it is win more, isn't it, at that point? Yeah. So the other two mythics I think we should talk about as well is we've got Sphinx of the Final Word. So this is like a big blue fatty finisher. It's like a shit aetherling, but with evasion. Speaking like, of making people sad, um, yeah, it's, it's literally just a, a yet another standard control finisher but the, the thing is I don't I don't oh, think it's as good as people are saying it is though it's 7 mana it dies to crux it dies to the second mode of cause of extra turn it dies to the like two edict effects we've got in the format like it's it, see it dies to a lot of other things that the hex proof doesn't stop it from dying to I suppose but if you're if you're playing a 7 mana creature that you're hoping to ride to victory you're going to be able to protect it generally You'll have permission. You'll have. So we're, we're saying like this isn't just Aetherling where you get to seven mana and you cast this bad boy and it wins. No, we're talking like no, you, you hold up protection. So you're talking. We're talking nine to ten mana here. Yeah. So the yeah. opponent can't just like dig through time and find the uh, foul turning invocation and just wreck you. I have just decided that I don't like this card, <laughs> and I will tell you why because I just read the flavor text, and all that makes me think of is the annoying people that have like the nope. Counter spell sleeves. Yeah, all the, that's all I can think of now. I just have a moral opposition to this card. Because I mean, I love playing blue permission. Like I love. Oh, it. I like playing permission. I just don't like the people like I play. Oh no, permission. yeah, I agree. With I'm you the best player in the world. The only thing I will like about this card is people will massively smugly play it down, think they are the shit. They they've got you, and you play the answer, and they just tilt and go crazy. Or they just die. <laughs> or they, they just, just died a combo. Them with some other things. Yeah, yeah like they, isn't they... he comparable to the drifting death? Dumgar. He's one more mana, but his abilities are so much better. I don't know because he, he he gets blocked. He gets chumped all day, every day, right? Like by the same sort of things that drifting death would just wreck and it's kill. True. It's it, a five-five body for seven mana isn't impressive, honestly. Yeah, but yeah. three-seven for six mana is horrible. Most yeah, but it, but it, but it used to hunt down Elspeths by killing all tokens. It also allows yes. you to play things like Foul Tongue Invocation and my favourite spell in standard right now, Stillingar Scorn. Like, this guy's not even a dragon. If he was a dragon, I would be shitting a brick right now. Like, this would be the this would be like, well, he's not Ujitai. That's the thing. Why do I want to play this piece of shit when I play Ujitai? Yeah, that's my final could, word on it. Because he no, could attack and that's still be expert. My final word, get it? Get it? Unfortunately. <laughs> and then we have one more mythic to discuss that's been spoiled from this sort of spoiler sheet, which is Kalatas Traitor of the of the of Ged. Mm-hmm. He's looking all freshy in this shit, isn't he? He's like a he's like a bleeding guy with a skull for a face. Face crab on his head. Yeah, it looks like a um, head crab from Half Life. He looks like a zombie yeah. from that. Got some um pretty good stats. He's a four mana three four with life link. I mean, the one big thing is that he is out of bolt range. Yes. Or any kind of. You so does he? Yeah. Anyone. So is he better than a Huntmaster, or is he better than? Well, wow, he gives you quite a lot of value, like a Huntmaster does, right? Is he comparable to Huntmaster? Well, he requires a bit more work than Huntmaster. Does he? Well, you play a Huntmaster, you get a Wolf for two life. Yeah. But you, you're, but you're left with a two-two that might flip. Right. This guy is out of bot range, and will grind out value a lot slower. Don't forget, I'm, I'm talking about playing him in a deck that plays shit tons of removal. But well, the deck so is just you one for one removal. Wait a turn, you kill a guy and you swing for four. You, you're token mm. your life and he's already ahead of him. Yes. Yeah. Also, the other thing to consider is that in standard, he's going to see some standard play because he's because we're following this up with Shadows of Innistrad, which 
is gonna have some like sac. There's zombies. gonna be a bunch of sacrifice. There's, there's gonna be vampires and zombies, obviously as well. But there's yeah. also gonna be a bunch of sacrifice effects in decks and things. There's gonna be a load of stuff like there's there might be morbid coming back or a morbid starter. There's gonna be a load of stuff where people are gonna want to try and get all of their like weird value. Is this undying your speculation target, back. Dave? Und Should yeah, like, but like undying might come back, for example. It it screws undying. Oh wow! Yeah, turn undying off. And oh, gives, it's so easy. It gives you, it turns their undying into you having a tutu. It turns their morbid off as well, right? If they're going to sack their own dude, yeah? Yeah. So we're getting, oh, well, I'm with you. That's, that's great. This guy. This guy right it's here. It's not what I was getting at, but yeah, that makes me sound smart. Yeah. <laughs> I was just talking about just, just death, uh, like dying and triggers being a thing. So he fucks with their game. Oh, God, this yeah. guy's so disruptive. He makes me want to play him. Like, so is this your speculation target? Should we all be buying up Kalatas as well before the Shadows gets here? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I think he's. He's he's a vaguely good enough card anyway that like uh, like he might make what's her name uh, Drano a bit more playable in the kind of well because you can sacrifice her to give him well no not because you can sacrifice him <laughs> because you can play you, you, you can play them in like a there might there might be a vampire deck and it just like it's she's a good card but she hasn't really got a deck he's I mean, a... it's a nasty curve yeah well. exactly you go, you, know, you go turn turn three Drano turn four Kalatas you you're swinging with a lot turn five at that point yeah yeah um so thanks for watching thanks for listening if you've just listened to like a podcast um click the subscribe button we're gonna put up some more videos on my expeditions and shit um and thanks for my colleagues for coming along and, and talking about cards with me goodbye bye bye, bye.